Hi, this is Mike Thomas coming to you with the program of WLSCoaching.net. It stands for Weight Loss Sustainability. You're being sent this program because you've had interest in learning more about the specifics of the WLS Coaching program. My plan is to really try to explain as much of this program as I possibly can and answer any questions that you have. And after you view this program, if you could just get back to me and with the questions that you have that I wasn't able to answer for you specifically. Again, my name is Mike Thomas. I'm a lifestyle pharmacist. I'm also a health coach with this program itself. And this program, is there's no cost, there's no fee for this program itself. My phone number is 217-761-4489. So getting started, first thing I want to talk about is some of the potential benefits from eating a whole food plant-based lifestyle. And of course, one of those is weight loss. This is really about total health, but one of the side effects that happens when you eat this way is your weight becomes, you become a normal BMI weight. Uh, so many people want to lose 10, 15, 20 pounds. They want to pursue this lifestyle to lose that weight. Uh, you can reverse heart disease. This is the only lifestyle diet that's ever been shown to actually truly reverse heart disease. Dr. Dean Ornish in the early 90s showed that you can do this, in fact, so much so and was so successful that Medicare now pays for his program, the Ornish program, as well as many private insurance companies. Uh, with this way of eating, whole food plant-based, you can actually reverse type 2 diabetes and prediabetes as well. You can have increased energy, more confidence, both look and feel great. If you're going to go 100% on this program, uh, this is what the slide that shows you, but I just want you to know that if you decide to do this program and you, you basically want to have meat from time to time or you want to cheat on the weekends, that's entirely up to you and I will still support you because you're still pursuing better health. Ultimately, you decide on the spectrum to what degree that you want to go. Many of my clients do decide to try to go 100% as much as possible, and every once in a while they'll cheat or they'll plan to cheat. But primarily, they have a vested interest in their health, and they really want to try to do the best they possibly can do. You, you can't really be 100% because that would be perfect, and nobody is perfect necessarily. There's going to be mistakes. There's going to be letdowns. Uh, typically with, with any diet itself specifically, but this is really a lifestyle of pursuing better health for the long term. So I wanted to have, and I've got a few slides on here like this, but I wanted to have a slide where I just kind of show you, if you're going to do this 100%, this is what it looks like. So whole food plant-based, all your foods are whole foods. They're what basically what's grown in the ground. They're the nuts, they're the seeds, they're the beans, they're the legumes, they're the fruits, they're the vegetables, the non-starchy vegetables as well as the starchy vegetables, such like sweet potatoes and potatoes and then whole wheat pasta. All that's included in, in the what you can eat. No, deed, no meat at all, no dairy, no cheese, no milk, no oil, no white flour. We really want to try to eliminate all processed foods um, because of what they have is all the chemicals that they have in them as well as the high sodium, the high oil content, the low nutritional value, and the high calories that are in processed foods. You're planning meals as part of this program, and I can help and support you in that process. It's really important to make sure that you're planning meals to a certain degree. Logging your meals, where you send me an email at the end of each day, which takes you about five minutes to fill out a use form that I send you, and it basically says what you had for the day, your biggest win of the day, your challenge of the day, and your plan for the next day. If you're interested in intermittent fasting, I also coach you a little bit about intermittent fasting, which can help you, and I've got a slide about that as well. Also with this program is coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching from me. It's typically a 30 or 60 minute call once a week, each week over the course of the two month program. Community support, and that's really where the magic happens because you're going through this process over the course of two months with a number of other individuals. It could be with two other individuals, it could be with 10 other individuals, but that community support with people back and forth is really what makes this sustainable for the long term. When you get a bunch of like-minded people together, a lot of really wonderful things can happen. I actually logistically set up a buddy system as well, so you will be paired up with a buddy. It could be somebody else's that's in your group. It could be a previous WLS coaching client that I've had, but it'll be somebody that you can support and that can support you with text, calls, picture of your food, questions, cups of coffee, whatever makes sense for you in the realm of being a buddy. 
And then the, again, the team together is together for two months in the vehicle of the WLS coaching program. Again, just to reiterate, the whole food plant-based diet is the only diet that's ever been shown to reverse heart disease. So calorie density is the next slide. And I want to talk to you a little bit about this. This is a slide that I use from Chef AJ, somebody that I very much respect and um, really explains this so well in so many videos online. But basically what you want to do if you're going to be 100% is that red line that's up and down in the middle of the screen there. You want to eat all the foods that are to the left of that red line. Calorie density as a definition is the number of calories per set weight of food. And so in this scenario, it's really average calories per pound. And so, so non-starchy vegetables all to your left are about 100, pound, 100 calories per pound. Fruits and vegetables are about 300 calories per pound. And then you've got unrefined complex carbohydrates such as potatoes, whole grains, corn, beans, legumes. Those are, those are 400 to 600 calories per pound. The foods in green are whole foods found in nature and contain tons of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and phytochemicals, and micronutrients. They also contain fiber and water, which creates bulk and increases satiety, so you're not as hungry. Those are the foods that you really want to eat in this plan. The foods to the right of the red line are foods that we want to try to avoid. However, the ones that, are, that have the purple on the top line there are the avocados, which is 700 calories per pound. Nut seeds, nut butters, and tahini is 2,800 calories per pound. Those are actually very healthy. So those are okay in limited amounts. But if you're trying to lose weight, you can see at the bottom it says the foods in purple are healthful foods, but are calorically dense and are best included in small amounts after weight loss is achieved. And the other ones in red, we want to avoid altogether. They're very high. They're very heavy in calories and very low in nutritional value. Things like ice cream, bread, uh, flour, cheese, sugar, etc. There's a lot of that. Chocolate. All the way to the right is oils. Your oils are 4,000 calories per pound. So you can have somebody that has a pound and a half of non-starchy vegetables as a salad. And then they're going to put three or four tablespoons on there and go from 150 calories and all that salad to 800 to 900 calories. So we really want to try to avoid oil for a lot of reasons. Calories as well as what it does to the endothelial wall of your blood vessels which is really tough for diabetes, which is really tough for heart disease. That's calorie density. Also, as you can show on this slide what calorie density does, there's three ways that you can measure when you're full. Your body measures it when you have the number of the volume of the food, the weight of the food, and the nutritional value of the food. So on the left, you can see 400 calories of oil does not have very much volume, does have no nutritional value at all, and obviously there's not very much weight there in the 400 calories. 400, 400 calories of chicken has a little bit more volume, uh, has a little bit more weight, and has a little bit more nutritional value than oil, but not very much weight, not very much space in the stomach. But on the right, you can tell definitely with calorie density, 400 calories of spinach, eggplant, and beans pretty much fills up the entire stomach, and that's how this works. Another one is a good example for calorie density would be, you know, which is more filling, a pint of ice cream or a half a gallon of raw salad, three ears of corn, two baked potatoes, and a pound of cherries. Those are all those are all basically the same amount of calories, those two columns there, the pint of ice cream versus the second half, the same amount of calories, but obviously they're going to be a lot more filling, have a ton more nutritional value and more weight than a pint of ice cream. So what am I supposed to eat if I'm supposed to eat everything to the left of that red line? Here are some examples, and this is one that way that I can help you is I have a number of recipes. I also have a number of websites that I would highly recommend that you get onto, but there's a ton of main courses. When I first started this program, I'm sorry, when I first started eating this way about two and a half years ago, I thought all I was really going to eat was lettuce, spinach, and carrots because I thought it was all about rabbit food, but I was pleasantly surprised when I really started researching and getting into recipes and how you can make a lot of very healthy foods that actually taste amazing. And that's one of several reasons why this process and this program is sustainable for the long term. Really, this is not a this is a lifestyle. This is not about going on a diet and trying to lose weight in 90 days saying, okay, or 60 days saying, okay, I can go back the way I used to eat. People decide to, to go this route because they want to lose weight, of course, but also because they want to be more healthy. But as some examples, you can see on the screen, some really delicious food, very excellent. I've got recipes and have cooked all of those. Here's some sides that you can have, some pretty basic stuff. Corn on the cob, pinto beans, brown rice with some veggies, black beans, baked potatoes, mashed potatoes, and cornbread. 
Desserts also, I don't necessarily go heavy on the desserts in the beginning with my clients, but there's some really great desserts. For one example would be the banana and ice cream on the bottom left-hand corner of the screen there. That is so good. And all it is is frozen bananas that were really, really ripe and almost kind of brownish. You peel them and you put them in the freezer. When they become very, very hard, then you throw those in a food processor with a little bit of plant-based milk and it becomes like soft serve ice cream. It tastes delicious, it's incredibly healthy. You add a few nuts in there and it tastes like peanut butter ice cream. It tastes amazing that way as well. You can add some blueberries to it, so now it's blueberry ice cream or even strawberry ice cream. There's many things you can do with banana and ice cream. Uh, so a lot of really good desserts. Again, there's a ton that you can actually have that tastes very good. I can help you with all that. This is what I call the money slide. Uh, one of the one of the mistakes that my clients make in the very beginning is they think again that they're supposed to be eating just the top left hand corner there, which is your non starchy vegetables. So just lots of spinach and lettuce and cauliflower and celery and cucumbers and tomatoes. And I didn't eat any more because I know I'm trying to lose weight, or I didn't eat any more because I really want to do this the right way. And if you do that, you're actually doing it the wrong way. What you want to do is you want to have that non starchy vegetable, but you want to include your starchy vegetable. Something like a corn or a mashed potato or a potato or a sweet potato. Those are all things that you want to combine in it. A good example on the bottom half would be your fruit with oatmeal on the right half. Uh, I have salads all the time with a bunch of brown rice. I warm up some brown rice. I throw it on the salad. Black beans, warm them up, throw it on the salad. That's going to give you the fullness that's going to get you by so you're not starving two hours later and you're getting plenty of calories in that process. So just kind of think about that because that's that's one of the challenges that many of my clients have in the beginning because they think they need to do it the right way. And in reality, they can eat as much food as they want, all this stuff on the screen, until they, they're not hungry anymore. In fact, on this program, you can see... In this lifestyle, you should not ever be hungry this way of eating. It just You eat as much as you want of this food. It tastes delicious. And when you're full, you stop eating. It's really that simple. So again, one of the ways that I can support you is I have a number of different recipes. And I have them categorized under the Microsoft program OneNote. So if you have a subscription to Microsoft... So you have things like Microsoft Word or Microsoft PowerPoint or Microsoft Excel. Then you probably have access to what's called Microsoft OneNote. And you would just need to download that app for free. If you don't have Microsoft, then you don't have access to OneNote. If you have access to OneNote, I can actually share my files with you. You can get into there and you can see the recipe, the link for the recipe, my notes. A lot of the recipes, I've got notes and pictures and timelines and recommendations and helpful hints. So just know that I can help you with that capacity as well as send you individual recipes. And I've got also many sheets that I can send you with recipes on it as well. And then, like I said earlier, I have a number of websites that I can send to you. But again, it's main courses, it's sides, it's desserts, it's soups, it's breakfast, it's extras. That's a big way that a lot of people will come to me and say, I really want to do your program because I want to learn more of how to cook this way to be more healthy. Definitely can help you with that. This is another way that you can get a whole bunch of recipes for just $4.99. So for less than $5, there's a Forks Over Knives app, which has, I think it now has actually over 500 recipes because I had, uh, they've added a number of recipes since I downloaded the app and put this on the screen. So I believe they have over 500 recipes categorized, breakfast, lunch, dinner, salad dressings. I mean, there's a ton of stuff on there. Highly recommend it. You certainly don't have to get it, but... A number of my clients, one of my clients actually introduced it to me. I wasn't even that familiar with it. And a number of my clients, since I've talked to them about it, have gotten it and have thrown me, hey, I tried this recipe. You know, when there's 400 recipes on there, 500 recipes on there, I haven't tried them all. I actually have only tried a fraction of them. But they'll send them to me to say, hey, try this one. It was really pretty good. So I like to share that with, with my clients as well. So there's a couple of slides here. One of them is what's called Mama Says. And the next slide is the Purple Carrot. So it's mamasays.com and the purple carrot. I bring these up because these are services that you can basically order the food online. There's a lot of people that are extremely busy and they don't necessarily have as much time to prep their food. Although you still need to prep your food on both of these plans to a certain degree. Obviously, they're a little bit pricey as it relates to what you're trying to accomplish. But... Uh, it's not it's not horrible as far as price go, but it's just another avenue that you potentially could have. I actually have a client that I recommend, and Mama says just to try it. Uh, it's a man and wife that are extremely busy with three kids, 
and they also got the purple carrot and they liked them both, but they liked the purple carrot better the way the food tasted. They didn't say that mama says was bad because they said it was fine, but there's a service plan that you can see at the bottom of that screen there and you can get both those web pages and just try them out if that's something that you're interested in as an avenue for meals. So as I mentioned before, a big part of this program is really having a plan, a plan for success. Planning your meals. Typically, I recommend my clients, especially a couple that's married uh, or that's working together in this, really they plan their week out usually on the weekends. That's just a recommendation. You can do whatever makes sense for you, but usually on Saturday or Sunday night, they're sitting down saying, okay, this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're going to have the following different meals and Thursday and Friday, so we know what we need to do to grocery shop. Uh, you can do it twice a week where you go out two or three days. That's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can skip some and just eat out from time to time. But there is definitely a challenge of eating this way when you eat out because of the oils that are out in those products in the restaurants and stuff. And then the daily plan on your right-hand side. I, my recommendation is you really never go to bed not knowing your next day's eating plan. Okay, so I work with you and coach you and support you in the capacity of how are you planning, what I can do to give you some helpful hints on planning, if that's something that you're struggling with. Some of my clients got this, they're very organized, they plan really well, and some of them, they just haven't done it, it doesn't really come naturally to them, and they need some help and support with that. That's something I can do with you. So getting organized, again, just really working with uh, being as organized as possible, it's one of the components to dieting success. Uh, minimizing the decision-making process by proper planning. Here's just some helpful hints. Consider what your top two to four breakfast options are. I pretty much just have two breakfast options. I usually have almost uh, every morning I have a big bowl of oatmeal with a bunch of fruit. And I, crunch, I, I grind up some flax seeds in there and I throw it on there as well. Um, consider two to four breakfast options. And I also have, sometimes I have shredded wheat with some plant-based milk and a few bananas in there, but almost always I have the oatmeal. But it's really simple for me because one third of my meals between breakfast, lunch, and dinner, one of third of my meals is already taken care of almost every single day. And those are the kinds of helpful hints that I would recommend you. If you start locking into what are my top snacks, what are my top fruits, what are the vegetables I really like, what do I like to have for breakfast, then it becomes a little bit easier because you can identify the things that you like. And after your habits start really establishing themselves, which takes just a few weeks, some of this starts becoming automatic for you. Another thing to do get be organized is to have at least five go-to meals that can be made quickly and easily. And these are just some examples on the screen there. And I can send you a lot of other ones that I can recommend that are really easy, really simple, that helps with that planning process, which sometimes can be more difficult. Planning for success. These are just recommendations after you go sh shopping at the grocery store to spend about a half an hour, 45 minutes, and chop up your veggies ahead of time. The individuals that do that, it does take a little bit more discipline and, and diligence, but the individuals that do that have more success in consuming those vegetables versus, oh, that's right, I forgot I bought this two weeks ago. Oh, it's already gone bad. Let me throw it away. So to save uh, money, basically, uh, get out in front of it and take care of that, and then you're going to execute what I call clean eating when you have those actual vegetables. Frozen vegetables, convenient and healthy. Frozen fruit, convenient and healthy. Highly recommend that. Canned beans, Another something that's extremely healthy as well, I would get the ones with low or no sodium because the ones that have sodium in them versus no sodium, they have 20 times more sodium in them and you don't really need that sodium at all. So uh, another way that you're going to have some shelf life. Another recommendation is to batch cook. So let's just say you decide on Monday and Tuesday you're going to have a pinto bean soup. You can really make a big batch on Monday and it could cook in the, in the crock pot all day. And you can have that for the next two or three days. In that example, I said Monday and Tuesday. But that's another way that you can have this success and get around all the different preparation that needs to be done to make it a little more simplistic for you. So logging meals. As I mentioned before, this is part of the program. It certainly is optional. And some of my clients do this really well. And some of my clients, just it's not for them. I recommend it because I think the chances of you having success and converting to this lifestyle is that much greater when you log your meals. In fact, there was a study done a number of years ago at St. Francis Medical Center in Peoria, Illinois, where they took 15 nurses and they, were, they, and they, took, they took 30 nurses. 15 nurses went on the diet, the same diet. And they logged their meals and the other 15 nurses went on the same diet and they didn't log their meals. And at the end of the winter, after 90 days, the, the nurses that logged their meals actually lost weight and were very happy with how it worked because they were intentional. They were tracking what they were doing. They had their own personal account accountability. 
the nurses that didn't log their meals actually gained weight. They didn't lose any weight at all. So I send you a use form and I can send that to you after we talk after this presentation. It's pretty straightforward. You're going to see it on the next slide. It takes about five minutes to fill it out, but uh, it's something that I highly recommend. This is what the use form looks like. Uh, it literally takes three minutes to fill it out. A lot of times the, the challenge with my folks, my clients send it to me is they just forget to fill it out. But uh, we usually have them set an alarm or something like that. But today I ate oatmeal and fruit. For lunch I had spinach with some brown rice, a few beans, some side carrots, big glass of water. Dinner I had pinto bean soup with some brown rice and some corn on the cob. Uh, for other I had a banana and an apple today. My eating plan for tomorrow is the following. My biggest win today is X and my biggest challenge today is X. I said that pretty quickly, but it does take probably three or four minutes to fill it all out. You email it to me and you're done. That's the, the food logs. So intermittent fasting is something that I, I've come to learn more about uh, in myself. When I went on this, I was I weighed about 180 pounds. I got down to 155 we're just eating whole food, plant-based, three meals a day. And I decided to do a little bit of intermittent fasting. So two or three days a week, I would just skip breakfast. And I would eat a really big lunch to compensate for that. So I literally was having about the same amount of calories whether I was having two meals or three meals a day. But with intermittent fasting, when you don't have that meal, you can see the green line on that top chart and the green line on the bottom chart where that fat burning is happening because your insulin level drops. And that's when you really start burning that fat. So you could literally have three meals with the same calorie on the top of the screen or two meals with the same calorie on the bottom of the screen and lose more weight. When I decided to skip breakfast two, usually about two times, um, two times a week, I did that. And this is about going back about nine months ago. My weight dropped from 155 to 149. And I haven't weighed 149 pounds since the eighth grade, ninth grade. I weighed 155 or so when I was in high school and such. In that fasting period, all you would do is just drink water and black coffee. You shouldn't have any sweeteners at all because those are going to spike your insulin level up. So if you're just a little bit hungry and you pop, you know, a lifesaver in your mouth, you pretty much might as well eat something healthy because it's going to spike your insulin level up and you're not going to be burning fat anymore. So this is something that some of my clients aren't interested in doing at all. This is also something that some of my clients right off the bat decide, you know what, I have a great breakfast every day. I'm really not that hungry around lunchtime because I'm so busy with work and I'm going to come home and I'm going to have a huge, huge dinner, so a healthy dinner. So I'm just going to skip lunch. And sometimes three or four days a week, clients that just start out do that that way. And they're very successful with it. You also don't want to intermittent fast if you're so hungry and you're so miserable because that's not what this is about. This lifestyle isn't about me and miserable. In fact, intermittent fasting isn't really about the whole food plant-based lifestyle. But I do have some clients that would like to drop weight. So this is just, and you can drop weight whole food li plant-based lifestyle without doing this at all. It just takes a little bit longer and that's okay too. This isn't a race. This isn't about perfection. This is about progress. So it's just something that some, some people are interested in. I want to just include it and coach people through that process. Now there is some fasting where people will do water only fasting where they're just drinking water for days. That's not what this is about at all. For me, it's really just about skipping one meal every once in a while and what makes sense for you itself specifically. So snacking. So I don't recommend that you snack unless you're really hungry. Then I would say have a piece of fruit or have something healthy. Have Just pop a few nuts in your mouth, you know, uh, just to get you by. I wouldn't certainly have the cookie that the lady in the slide has there, but snacking is okay. Uh, you definitely should snack if you're hungry, but if you're not hungry and you want to get it between meals, that's going to allow your body to burn that much more fat in the process as well. So snacking is definitely not off limits. Just snack healthily. As I mentioned before, weekly coaching from Mike, the whole purpose here is just to totally support you, to get with you one-on-one, -on -one, find out what your whys are, find out what your goals are, coach you towards those goals, find out to what degree that you want to go all in or not in this program, what makes sense for you, and help you and support you in that process. My goal here is not to tell you and you decide, let's say, I'm going to be whole food plant-based, 100% to the left of that red line, Monday through Friday, and then on the weekends, I'm going to have beer and pizza and chicken. That's entirely up to you. My goal is not to convert you from the weekends to be whole food plant-based. My goal is to help you to be as healthy as possible as you deem that you want to. I give you helpful hints. I listen to you. I ask you lots of questions and answer questions. We sometimes review, review food logs or I may have questions about the food logs for you. Discuss challenges and wins and we, we also establish some small wins and some next steps as we go on a weekly basis. Those calls are anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes. 
one other thing that I wanted to say about the food logs is if you send me your food logs on a daily basis, which again, I highly recommend, it really gives me an opportunity to, to reinforce those behaviors that you're trying to learn because change behaviors is difficult. We'll get to a slide in that in just a minute. But I can reinforce and say, hey, really wonderful job. That breakfast was amazing and that lunch was amazing. And actually your dinner was amazing. So really great job for the day. Watch out for this or nice job here. So just continue to give me an opportunity to encourage you as well as see how you're doing, ask you and challenge you various questions as well. And in case it keeps the engagement process going, which is helpful for sustainability as well. Speaking of sustainability, I think that this is a very sustainable way of eating. In fact, in the Ornish program, they have probably 80 to 85 percent of the people that start this are still doing it a year later, year later, which is pretty rare for different kinds of diets. Again, this isn't a diet. This is the lifestyle. As I mentioned before, behaviors that work for you for the long term. This is not about yo-yo dieting. This is, in my opinion, this is not about coming to see Mike for his two-month program and then going back into eating whatever you want to eat. You know, you identify what your why is that makes sense for you specifically. I think that this is sustainable because the food tastes good. There's no calorie counting. There's no weight portions. There's no uh, weight, lo weight Watchers points or anything like that. You eat as much as you want until you're full and then you stop eating. I'd like to put on here that this is uh, the Biggest Loser program. I have just so much respect for those coaches on that program and, and those athletes really that finish the program that lose a lot of weight. I call them athletes because they basically been working out for 60 or 90 days and they're usually in pretty great health. But it's not sustainable, and that's why there's no Biggest Loser reunion show, you know, because many of those people, unfortunately, gain back weight, sometimes a lot of weight, sometimes all that weight and even more because they don't have – eight hours to work out in a gym every day like they did on the program or somebody that's yelling at them or supporting them or putting their arm around them like they do on the on the program the biggest loser or eating very little food and you know they they have jobs they have lives they have to attend to once they get out of that program so this is i think very very sustainable uh because of it's because it's enjoyable your Y card. So this is part of the program as well. I ask you either on a Blake Index card or on your phone to put what you feel like your reason that you would want to pursue this lifestyle is. What are those reasons that would get you to your goal weight? What are those reasons that for aspiring to better health? And then what are the advantages of losing this weight? If I have an advantage of losing this weight or advantage of maintaining this lifestyle, I'm going to be a heck of a lot more healthy. I'm going to feel better. I'm going to have peace of mind. And I ask you to read that Y card, uh, which is a physical card or, again, information that's on your phone twice a day for 60 days to really continually imprint that on your brain of the big picture why that you're doing this. Real quick story, I had a client a couple of months ago, actually. I've had um, a number of clients, but this particular client was having a tough week for a lot of different reasons. And I asked them specifically, and they were still doing the whole food plant-based lifestyle, but there was just a lot of things going on. They were just kind of struggling with the planning and the kids and all kinds of stuff. And I asked this individual, are you, are you reading your white card twice a day? And the, their response was, Actually, that's the reason that I'm actually still executing so well with clean eating because it just imprints on my brain why this is incredibly important to me. So I think there's a lot of validity, validity to reading the Y card twice a day. I'd just like to state real quick the role of exercise. Uh, I think exercise is incredibly important. I think it is one of those strong pillars to better health. I would ask that Whatever type of exercise that you're doing, if you do enter this program, you just maintain that kind of exercise at least for the thirty to first 30 to 45 days of the program. So, for example, if you're not doing any exercise at all, I don't recommend you start doing exercise as you start this whole new lifestyle of whole food plant-based. As I said before, changing behaviors is difficult. Taking on the whole food plant-based is a little bit of a task and a challenge, but it's something that's very feasible. And with you work with a bunch of people, including myself, it's very, very possible. You can definitely do it on your own, but it's harder. But as you're changing those habits and behaviors with the diet, I'd like you to focus on that first and foremost. And then we start talking about exercise. If you are working out, you like to run, you like to walk, you exercise three times a week, I would just ask that you would continue that because I think that's wonderful. We don't want to stop that. When you fail, so it's really if you fail, because quite frankly, it's never going to be perfect, right? Your plan on the top right-hand corner there, it's going to be a straight line. I'm going to get to my goal. But reality, there's going to be bumps in the road. I'm going to have to go through a river. And there's going to be failure. And that's okay. This is not about shaming people. This is not about saying that you're wrong and you failed. This is about recognizing that sometimes you're going to slip. And sometimes those are going to be cheats. And sometimes those cheats are going to be planned. 
Sometimes those cheats are not going to be planned. It's okay. I, I like to reinforce with my clients, next bite healthy. I have had some coaching sessions with some clients when I started the call with them that they were kind of down on themselves because this past week, you know, they had ice cream because their daughter brought it out and they were frustrated and they went and had a bowl of ice cream. And, you know, Mike, that's not on the plan. I don't know. I, you know, and I started talking to them about, let's talk about your last seven days. Why don't you rate your last seven days? One out of 10, 10 being the most healthy. What do you feel like it was? Well, it was probably about an eight or a nine. I'm like, okay, well, that's not too bad. Well, let's look at six months ago. What was your, what do you think just an average six months ago? What would you say that would be? And usually the response is something like, well, two or three. So even with the ice cream, even with the slip-ups, they're doing so much better because of the nutritional value of that food that they're feeding themselves. So cut yourself some slack. This is all about support. This is not about shame. And this is about having that mantra at the bottom of the screen, next bite healthy when that happens. What about cheating? As I mentioned before, I actually have a system set up with my clients in the beginning to say, if you're going to cheat, no problem. Cheat, just plan it, right? If you don't plan it, it's okay as well. But uh, I have some clients that love to have seafood on Sunday night with their family, uh, pasta seafood, right? Seafood pasta. So that, that happens. They enjoy it. They want it. They cheat. I cheat from time to time too. I'm not 100% to the red, left of the red line. I'm about 90 to 95%. But again, if I would give myself a rating, most weeks I'm around a nine, nine and a half. Uh, again, before I started this process with all the meat, all the milk I was eating, all the processed foods that I was eating, I was more like a two or a three. And you can see it in some of my outcomes and my results, both with my weight, uh, my heart disease, which I do have, etc. cetera. Um, anyway, big picture. What about cheating? You certainly can cheat. Obviously, we want to minimize that to the best of our ability. But when it happens, no worries. Just get back right, up, right back on track. I'm a huge proponent of what's going on with your mind. And so I do say let's fuel your body with this wonderful, highly nutritious food. But also let's fuel your mind. Let's fuel your fire with reading, listening to podcasts, YouTube videos, all are ways to stay driven towards success. I have a list in my one note as well of a ton of different resources, both videos and podcasts that can help you. I also have a ton of uh, audiobooks that I can help you with as well. But I think that's incredibly important. You certainly don't have to have, if you don't have any interest in that, that's not something you have to do at all. But about half of my clients are asking me for different links. And quite frankly, some of those are coming back to me of things that they found. So I can put them in, on, my, on my library as well and listen to them. So you just it's just a way to continually keep you motivated and drive you towards success. I, I love this quote by Maya Angelou, which is, do the best you can until you know better. And when you know better, as you'll learn through this process with different videos, etc., you will do better. Another part of the process I can help you with. Social support. So it says on your screen, social support, Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock. Uh, it's a 30-minute it's a call. I basically have Zoom and use the Zoom app. So you'll want to download the Zoom app, which is free, to be able to take these calls. Uh, it's not necessarily on Tuesday nights. When I made this um, PowerPoint presentation, I was having them on Tuesday nights. My current list of clients that I have. Uh, I, I have those for the months uh, that I currently have right now. We're doing the calls on t Monday night because that worked best for the majority of my clients. It's usually from 8 to 8.30 Central Standard Time. I usually uh, facilitate those calls. That's me in the top left-hand corner there with my wife, a couple of my cl clients below, and then a couple of my clients to the right there as well. Uh, I'll facilitate a number of topics and conversations. I usually send to my clients the morning of the call. Hey, here's the topics we're going to talk about tonight. Let's everybody get together and share. But that community support is incredibly important. In fact, it's so important that I have an exit interview and a survey that I give to my clients so I can continually evolve this program to help and support and make it as good as possible for people in the future. And one of the most common statements from my clients upon exiting the program is, can I still sometimes participate in the video conference calls? Because those are a lot of fun. I love the engagement with the other people. We learn recipes, et cetera. So that's been a very positive thing with the video conference calls have been a very positive aspect of the program itself. And this just talks about losing weight and how fast you're going to lose weight. Uh, again, this is a diet, but it's also a lifestyle. How fast sh should you lose the weight? Uh, what I don't what I don't recommend is that you get on the scale every day, and that's really the purpose of this slide. I recommend on day one, right before you start, you weigh yourself, and then you wait at least three weeks afterwards. So you're focused on what your plan is and executing your plan. When I say executing your plan, I mean eating clean, healthy, whole food, plant-based. 
how long can you go to without weighing yourself? I've had actually some clients that weighed themselves on day two and then day four and then day seven. And then I said, how long can you wait? And they actually waited an entire two months. And of course, was very excited about what the numbers said, but they could tell over the course of those two months that their food, their their clothes were getting lighter, et cetera. So the reason why I do that and try to recommend and encourage you not to weigh yourself is, Willie, what you're doing is executing a plan. You put together a plan, you execute that plan. Sometimes you can do really well on a particular day, and if you're weighing yourself every day, that next day, for whatever reason, you're one or two pounds heavier because you had a big glass of water or didn't go to the bathroom or something. Those things are going to happen. And I don't want your emotional emotions to go high and low based on what that number is. Let's just take care of the plan, execute the plan, and not worry about the weight. The weight will take care of itself. So, Some challenges, how, how will you manage these? So again, changing behaviors can be difficult. It is difficult, you know, people that don't want to do certain behaviors, want to change those behaviors, it doesn't necessarily come natural. You have to be intentional and you have to be focused. Um, there's a, The line to success is not necessarily a straight line like you saw on the slide before. Sometimes you're going to be hungry. You should not be hungry on this plan, but sometimes you could be hungry. What are you going to do about that in a pinch when you're driving your car and you're half an hour away from everything else? Recognize that there may be a little bit of hunger pain there. Not the end of the world, but sometimes that can happen. You're going to potentially fail. You probably will fail sometimes, and that's okay as well. It's going to take a little bit of intentionality and an effort. Some of my clients have detox, detox cravings because they've had that particular thing that they've loved and it could be chocolate cake or whatever that's very real for some individuals especially for food addicts and i've worked specifically with some of my clients on their cravings to help them to get over those cravings and we've been very successful with that i'm very proud of that sometimes you can have gas because the microbiome which is the bacteria in your gastrointestinal system is set up a certain way based on the foods that you've been eating so when you change those foods you can have excessive amount of gas because your microbiome is trying to adjust that's usually transient. That usually goes away over the course of time. And think about yourself personally. What other challenges would you potentially be having? Again, this is not about pe being perfect. This is about making progress towards better health. Sabotaging thoughts. Your skill in responding to sabotaging thoughts such as, Josh, geez, this isn't fair. I had a really tough today. I deserve to eat this and what I want. Or this is too hard. Or I really wish I could eat this. Focus on what you can do today. Uh, not next week or next month. Uh, how you respond to your sabotaging thoughts and what you can do to work with me or your buddy or the team on the specific nights we have the video conference calls can help you with these as well. So I do have some, some specific clients that are challenged with this. Success stories. Just want to sh share a few of those with you on the top of your screen. Uh, Jill Dalton, who has her own whole food plant-based cooking show. That's actually what it's called. She's an amazing um, cook and has recipes for free online. You can see her before and after. She was obviously a little bit heavier. She lost weight. She's a beautiful woman. And you can see her skin is even that much healthier too. And that's one of the positive aspects I get from some of my clients. Plant-based Gabriel, Gabriel is a big hero of mine. He's lost over 100 pounds about four to five years ago. Uh, Plant-based diet, he was actually a long snapper, started for Nebraska Cornhuskers. Unfortunately, broke his back in an injury while lifting weights. Could no longer play football, lost his scholarship, but then found out about this, this lifestyle. Uh, finished his degree, lost 100 pounds. He actually could not exercise doing this because he had broken his back. So he basically lost all that weight without exercise. He then moved in with his parents who started becoming very ill. He learned a lot about cooking whole food plant-based and cooked all their meals for like six to nine months and helped them to get to more reasonable weight and better health as well. So very inspiring man of character. Uh, the gentleman on your right on this screen is Dr. Stephen Lewinda. He did not know about this lifestyle, and many doctors do not, because in, in how the power of this lifestyle can do to help reverse different conditions like diabetes and heart disease. Unfortunately, his father actually lost his foot due to diabetes. He was on, Dr. Lewinda was on his way to actually becoming a diabetic himself. You can see the picture to his left. Since finding out about this lifestyle, he's lost over 90 pounds. He's actually, as a physician, has established his own lifestyle medicine program called Life 180 to help his patients and seeing some pretty amazing results with that. Chef AJ on your left, another one of my heroes, just an amazing woman. Uh, that's where we get, that's the woman we got the calorie density slide from in the beginning of this presentation. Uh, she struggled with her weight for many, many years. She actually was vegan. She didn't eat whole food plant-based. She ate a lot of vegan foods, which are plant-based, but they've got oils, a lot of processed foods. 
She's what you call a junk food vegan at that time. That's when she was about 165 to 170 pounds, the picture on the left there. Picture on the right is when she recognized what she can do to eliminate all sugar, oil, white flour from her diet, be as healthy as possible, cook the saute the onions without oil with just water that's what i do it's actually very simple to do and you can't i can't tell the difference in the taste it tastes amazing as well so she's got a lot of, there's a lot of resources that chef aj has that you can have access to as well and then i wanted to put this one on here this is tim i found out about him recently he weighed over 400 pounds there on the left ate this way and lifted weights you can't you you do not lose muscle mass necessarily by eating this way um, you don't have any issues with protein itself, and you can set, see that with Tim on the right-hand side. It's just one of my my last slides here, preparing for success before your day one, two to four weeks prior. These are some recommendations. I also will follow up with you if you'd like to go through the program. Uh, you'll contact me and say, I'd like to go through the program, and I've got some questions for you or what have you. We'll talk for a while, and I'll give you some of this information that I usually follow it up with a pretty long email that I can copy and paste that I send to all my other clients about the things they can do to prepare themselves for starting this journey, which is pretty exciting. One of those is clear the environment. If it's in your house, it's in your mouth, a famous saying from Chef AJ. Uh, many of my clients time and time again to say, sure enough, I didn't get rid of it, and I ate it, and I shouldn't have. It is what it is. I highly recommend you watch the documentary Forks Over Knives, which is available for free on Netflix if you have access to that. If you don't have Netflix, you can still watch it. You just have to get it online for like three or four bucks on Google, I believe. Uh, there's a video. It's actually not 15 minutes. It's, it's a little bit longer on calorie density on my website, WLSCoaching.net. I recommend you watch that to really understand calorie density and how that works. There's an amazing video by Dr. Anthony Lim at WLSCoaching.net as well. Uh, the link is on there. I highly recommend you watch that. It's about 80 to 90 minutes. Very powerful. Totally explains the whole food plant-based lifestyle, the benefits out of it. He also talks about himself personally. It's very, very powerful. Also, identify that you. I, I recommend that you identify your starting point. So things like how many inches is your waist? What is your weight? Uh, I would get some blood tests. Your, get a lipid panel. I would talk to your doctor ahead of time and let him know you're going on this and maybe run some tests. Get some before pictures. Make your white card on your card or phone and begin reading it twice a day. Decide what your goal is and write it down. Uh, if you want to increase your level of commitment, then write it down what you want to accomplish. Your chance to accomplish that is then much greater. A lot of times in the beginning calls that I have with my clients, I really stress a mindset of consistency. So the goal is sustainability for the long term. But the more meals you can have that are nothing but whole food plant-based meals, and you put those back to back, and then all of a sudden you have three meals in a day, then you have a whole day we had nothing but 100% clean eating. The more days you can put, to go, put together in a row, the more success you're going to have with this. The more days you're going to put them together in a row, then you're going to have a week of whole food plant-based eating. It's very possible. It's very feasible, even in the beginning, uh, with no cheats, uh, as well as you know, no oil, et cetera. So I just want to stress to you the mindset of consistency because sometimes there are bumps in the road. Again, look at the big picture of what your rating is. It's usually around nine, eight or nine when you make those mistakes versus what you had before of a rating of two or three, six months prior. So still having tremendous progress to better health. So, so heavy lifting in the beginning, I added this slide because I talked to my clients in the beginning and some of them, especially in the beginning, struggled. Uh, establishing new ha habits to create automaticity. Again, it does take intentionality. You got to build some momentum here. You got to plan. You got to help plan so much that you eliminate a lot of the decision making. I.e., you can make oatmeal the day before. Or you can batch. If you like oatmeal, you can batch oatmeal, and you can have oatmeal in the morning just by scooping it out, throwing it in the microwave for 60 seconds, and adding some fruit to it, and you're good to go. That helps eliminate the decision making. You know, getting organized that we talked before. You're going to potentially get a number of different recipes. I want you to be thinking about how are you going to organize those recipes so they're accessible because that one you had three and a half weeks ago, you really liked, but now you can't find it. That's just one version of getting organized that I mean. Not feeling well in the beginning, so headaches sometimes. I had a client that stopped drinking coffee, which isn't really part of this program. Definitely not the milk in the coffee, but this particular person wanted to go ahead and stop drinking coffee as well as pursue the whole food life, whole food plant-based lifestyle. And that individual struggled for the first few days and really got some bad headaches. Low energy sometimes in the beginning because, again, some of my clients aren't eating enough calories. You eat a lot of food this way and you get very satisfied. And, again, like I said before, sometimes there's some issues with gas 
in the beginning because your body's adjusting to the types of foods you're eating. One of the very last slides here is this kind of encompasses everything. I've talked about everything on this slide, uh, but I still like to just kind of put it all in one place so people got a visual of that. If you want, you can take a picture of this slide. I'll wait a minute or so. But planning, again, very, very important. We talked about the video conference calls, which is once a week. You can be on those calls. You don't have to be on those calls, but I highly recommend if you're available that you do get on those calls because there's a lot of magic that happens in the interaction with a lot of people that are that are like-minded trying to accomplish a, a common goal. Uh, executing, which I call clean eating. Intermittent fasting is part of it if you want it to be. Of course, the weekly coaching, the why card and how incredibly important that is. Uh, calorie density, we talked about specifically. The food logs, potential plan cheats that you could have for yourself. Fueling the fire, so video uh, videos that I can send you or podcasts that you can search on Google. I have a Facebook group that is only me and my former clients. So as I continually take on clients, all those people are in that group and they're posting things about meals that they've had. They're posting things about struggles or challenges that they've had or something that they found on sale, etc. And again, the buddy system that I talked about before. Potential other elements for my coaching, because uh, this is about total health potentially. So on top of whole food plant-based, and usually we don't get to these topics until the third, fourth, or fifth week if you want to talk about them. And that's, you know, exercise. If you want to start, okay, well, I've lost some weight. I'm feeling better. I know I still got more weight to lose, but what can I do to move more? What can I do to exercise more? And we kind of put a plan together potentially. How are you doing with sleep? What about stress management? How are you handling the stress in your life? And what kind of emotional support do you have around you, especially as you're converting to this new lifestyle? So just know that the coaching that I can offer to help and support you is really total health coaching. A lot of the focus initially for obvious reasons is about the whole food plant-based diet. Again, this is not about adding years to your life, although there is there is plenty of data that shows it does usually add around 8, 10, 12 years to your life. But if you're, the end of your life is miserable because you're disabled, who wants to live 8 to 10, 12 years more? Think about your life 20 years from now, 30 years from now, 40 years from now, chronic diseases, disability, pain, quality of life. This is about adding quality to your life. So making a conscious decision to add life to your years, not just years to your life itself. So this slide really is just all about what you have as questions. Hopefully you've been kind of maybe jotting down some questions itself. That's the end of the presentation uh, itself. Specifically, I would just ask that you, uh, when the when the uh, video is over, you can just contact me. You can text me and just let me know, hey, I've seen the video. I want to talk more about it. If you don't want to talk more about it, you don't have to. Again, this is there's no cost for this. There's no obligation to this. All I really want to do with my life moving forward is help as many people as possible to be as healthy as possible in converting to whole food plant-based to the degree that they want to. So definitely appreciate your time and attention. Have a wonderful day and hope to hear from you. You take care. Bye-bye.